Good morning, everyone. Thank you for starting your day out with me. I'm Jenna Stauffer. My first guest this morning, I definitely can't say enough about him. I've only recently had the pleasure of meeting him, but he's one of those people who just leave a mark that's unforgettable. Now he's dedicated the past 13 years of his life to helping people have a second chance at their lives. He's the president and the CEO of the Florida Keys Outreach Coalition, which we'll be talking all about this morning. Reverend Braddock, thank you for being here with Good me morning, today. Good morning, Jenna. Thank <laughs> you for having me. All right, now before we get into the FKOC, Reverend Braddock, I want to know a little bit about your story. You're from New York, so how did you end up here in Key West? Well, uh, yes, I was, I was born and raised in New York, and like most things uh, in life, um, this wasn't planned. Mm -hmm. uh, in the mid-1980s, I was working uh, with my own business in New York as a licensed private investigator. Had a, uh, a security company based out of Rockefeller Center in Manhattan. Uh, was, was doing very well and pursuing all the things that I thought at that time uh, were important to me, namely uh, building a successful career and, and money and home and all those sorts of things. And the, uh, the divine two by four uh, struck, so to speak. And uh, in 1984, I contracted bacterial spinal meningitis, uh, which was a near, near fatal uh, illness. And I spent a, a long time um, in a New York hospital recovering. And it was a life changing moment for me. It just regrouped my priorities um, and my goals and um, redefined uh, my purpose in life. And to make a long story short, I made a decision uh, within about a two-year period of that that I wanted to spend my life serving the sick and the poor, and to do so uh, in a religious order as, as a priest. And I entered the Order of St. Camillus, which uh, St. Camillus is the patron in the Roman tradition of the sick and the poor. Uh, and the order is in 36 countries around the globe and sponsors hospitals, nursing homes, hospices, um, homeless shelters, and such. Um, so I moved from New York, sold my business, moved to New York, um, entered the order as a religious brother, went to Sacred Heart School of Theology, uh, a seminary, and was uh, later ordained by Archbishop Rembert Weekland in Milwaukee. And I served um, then after that six years as chairman and CEO of the order's North American healthcare system. And at the end of my term, uh, I took a, uh, a short leave of absence. I knew nothing about Key West, but a priest friend invited me down. And I came for what I thought would be a one-time short visit. Mm -hmm. uh, made another visit uh, not too long after that. And um, those short visits have turned into going on 14 years in July. Wow. Well, so fortunate for us, though, to have you down here, Reverend Braddock. So it, it sounds like you were given a second chance Absolutely. at your life. Absolutely. And now you have dedicated your life to giving others second chances through the FKOC. Reverend Braddock, what would you say is the biggest misconception about the homeless population down here in Monroe County? The biggest misconception is that all homeless people are the same, which could not be further from the truth. The only thing that homeless uh, people have in common is the fact that they're homeless. Uh, the reasons are vast and complex and often intertwined. And so what FKOC is really all about is helping people uh, identify and heal from the numerous underlying causes of their homelessness, whether that be um, loss of a job, mental illness, substance abuse, domestic violence, and, and such. So when people come to FKOC, we treat them as an individual person and we work with them to address their, their particular needs, uh, either as individuals or as a, a family unit, and develop an, a very individualized plan of action to help them uh, not only move out of homeless, homelessness, but to address the reasons that they became homeless in the first place. And I'm so proud to say that FKOC is able to transition, on, a, on average, every year, 80% or more of our folks from homelessness into permanent housing. That's awesome, an awesome number. Now, do you have a personal favorite success story? I know there's so many. They are all success stories. Mm -hmm. uh, just a few weeks ago, a week before last, we had our 21st annual meeting during which we always recognize some of our outstanding achievers. And uh, I said then that it's so hard to choose one person because there's so many. But there are those who stand out not because of their own personal achievements and success, 
but because after they've achieved that level of, of success, they want so badly to give back and to help others and to inspire and to motivate. Uh, and so I've, I've got a whole collection of special stories mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and people in my life. Well, we're going to share some of those stories this morning and also I hope in the future to be able to talk to some of the FKOC clients because I had the pleasure of meeting some this past week. I took a tour of the facilities and everything and, and there are so many inspiring stories there. There certainly so. are. And thank you for visiting. That really meant a lot to our folks. It was awesome. And we're going to give you a tour this morning of all the FKOC facilities. We're going to take a quick break right now, but there is much more to come this morning, so stay with us.